Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, it's a lovely sunny morning. Come on, you can do it. What way should we go today? Should we go the fast way? Or should we go the, the windy way? The windy way? Okay. If we're going the windy way, we're gonna to have to put our wing mats in. Oh, here comes God. Right. Excellent. Let's, uh, let's clear up your view of the windscreen. You can see on the left there all those piles of ash. They're not Indian funeral pyres. They are the pyres of all the trees that used to be there. Okay, that's enough wiping. Window up. Oh dear, there's so much, isn't there? There's so much work involved in driving a car. You should see the work involved in flying a plane. That's even more. Not only have you got the side to side, you've got the up tilly up up and the down tilly down down. How are you anyway? All right, I'm keeping well, I trust. <clears throat> Another lovely day in paradise. It's uh, Friday, so I only work Friday mornings. I don't work Friday afternoons, it's a bit of a cliche. I wanted to take a half day off, but I wanted it to be another day, not Friday. Because the idea of the, you know, when, when they hear that the dentist isn't working Friday afternoon, immediately you get this sort of cliche, oh yeah, he's off playing golf, he's off at the golf course. Friday afternoon, you know, Poets Day. And uh, I never played golf. Never really uh, understood it. Not, not enough adrenaline in it for me. You know, uh, flying and motorcycling are my preferred uh, driving rent. Wiggly roads, blind bends. Not knowing if you're going to meet a bus or a truck coming the other way. These are the thrills, my day-to-day -day thrills. But uh, eventually we just ended up having Friday afternoon as the only logical afternoon, really. Having tried a few other afternoons and then, you know, I mean, some, you know, for some reason it's in the collective consciousness. People expect you to have Friday afternoon off. They don't expect you to have Tuesday morning off or Thursday afternoon or Wednesday afternoon. You know, unless you're in retail. So, thank you. So, so we started taking Friday afternoon off and then uh, we realised that we could probably cram all the patients into three and a half days. So then we started uh, leaving Thursday free, unless we really needed it. And then uh, Tuesday the hygienist has the surgery. So I've ended up working Monday, Wednesday and Friday morning. <laughs> Which is actually, I'm working a bit more than that at the moment. But uh, that's only because we're really busy because everybody's coming out of hibernation. Ah. So, a good friend of mine's bought a house. He... Uh, got into Bitcoin early. He's made, I think, at the last count, about four or five million out of it. He cashed in. It's quite funny, actually. He started looking for a house. This is a guy who's renting a flat in uh, in Margate, right? To a one-bedroom flat in Margate. And all of a sudden, decides he wants to buy a house, right? Because he's got the money. This is a guy, he's never going to know what a mortgage is because he's buying the house outright with his, you know, his Bitcoin. And uh, started looking at uh, houses worth about 450,000. I bear in mind that he's paying 20% capital gains tax on this. So, I mean, he's, he's going to have to cash in uh, 60,000, you know, to get 480,000 out. Oh, sorry, 600,000 to get 480,000 out. And, um, and then <clears throat> he started noticing, as we all do, but if you could only spend another 50,000 or another 100,000, you'd get a much nicer house. <laughs> so he stopped looking around about the 450 mark and um, started looking around the 650,000 mark. And, uh, you know, 
human nature being what it is. Although the houses around 650,000 were, were nice, <laughs> they weren't as nice as the houses around the 850,000 mark. <laughs> so, so he's decided to, uh, <clears throat> he's the only person I know who's got an accountant who sent him an email saying, fuck you, as far as I know. <laughs> because when he explained to the accountant what he was doing, that, you know, that he'd, he'd looked at the 450s and the 650s, but he decided that he's gonna, he's probably gonna cash in a million and get a, an 850,000 pound house as a first time buyer. And his accountant sent him this, this fuck you email, which was obviously in jest, but I mean, you know, it just goes to show how, uh, how many uh, standard deviations out of the norm his, his, uh, his dealings are. So, so yeah so he's cashed in I think he cashed in I don't know just over a million pounds worth and uh, and got uh, 800 or 9, 850 900 thousand pounds put in his bank account and I said to him you've got to tell the bank <coughs> where this money's coming from you know you're going to get it frozen right? you're going to be on the Americans uh, list of uh, international sanctions if you don't if you don't warn everybody, because they won't be, this will be coming out of the blue for them. They won't, they won't, none of them will in, in their entire lifetime careers have seen anyone do this other than, I know, possibly a lottery winner, you know? So, anyway, he's done his uh, due diligence and uh, KYC and anti money laundering and provided his passport and a list of all the trades that caused him to make the money and uh, today he's moving into this house massive house in uh, Nottingham I mean and you can imagine what an 850,000 pound house in Nottingham gets I mean it's practically the biggest house in Nottingham yeah uh, or if not Nottinghamshire <laughs> and he helped by being a bit of a computer nerd it all helped because he um he wrote this program that scraped all the estate agent sites and worked out the size of the floor plan and the cost and divided and worked out how many square feet he was getting for you know for his money and told him basically what properties were being you know represented the best value for money in terms of space and size which is something that uh, they do in America, they go on square footage a lot, you know, every extra square foot is uh, is on the details and, and sold by the Realtor, but uh, sold as in vended, you know, used as uh, in the particulars. Whereas it's in, in this country, we, because we all live in uh, rabbit hutches, uh, it's all about uh, being a bijou and uh, good for local facilities and uh, uh, you know, like nice country views or proximity to a bus route. It's all about the amenities and not the actual amount of the actual pure volume, um, which is a shame because it leads to people living in houses which are sort of quite twee and not, you know, like your average terraced house, but uh, with, um, you know, but in, in, a, in a house, which is in America would, would be the size of a garden shed. Well, there's less space over here, so they say, which is why we all have to live in such small houses, so they say. So anyway, I'll, I shall go up and see him at some point, and uh, no doubt I'll stay in one of the seven bedrooms he's got with seven en suites and the indoor swimming pool and the jacuzzi that you can swim in, because it pumps out one end and... Uh, you know sucks in the other so it's like a like a swimming an exercise bath for a horse you know have you seen those ones where they 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 put the horses in the old exercise and then they turn the water on and the horse swims along while staying still it's one of those for very very small horses so but um, the problem is at the moment uh, 
we can uh, go and visit him, providing we stay outside, which is a bit useless to, you can't drive to Nottingham to visit someone in their garden. Or you can, uh, I think from May the 17th, you'll be able to go and visit someone and, and go inside the house. Uh, but because he's got two friends and we want to drive up there together, that's three households. And so it's still at the moment, it's only two, it's going to be two households inside. So it might even be June or July before we can go and visit him. Which is a shame, because the place is going to be a complete tip by then. It's, uh, if you ever saw his flat in Margate, you'll know that the best thing to do is go and visit him. Preferably no more than two weeks after he moves in. Oh, look at that. Look at me. Dicing with death at the junction of death. Oh, I miss my motorbike. I had a Honda, a Honda VFR 750. VFR, VF stands for very fast. So. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I was going to ask my accountant, wasn't I, about Bitcoin? whether if I put some of the cash into Bitcoin, whether it counts as a capital purchase or as a, a currency reserve account. Not that he'll know. I don't know he'll know. My last time I asked them about Bitcoin, they sent me back the information I'd already given them about three months earlier. And they charged me for it. I guess. So what I was going to do was I was going to um, uh, expound on the uh, uh, the reason really why there's no National Health Service dentistry around now compared to uh, when I qualified in 1902. But uh, the problem is I haven't got the time to do it now. And uh, I did start doing it the other day, but then my uh, I realised that I hadn't turned my camera on. So, I could do five minutes on the uh, benefits of uh, remembering to turn your camera on. But that would be a bit boring. Oh, my arm's really stiff. I've got a pain in my bicep that's stopping me using my thumb. And I don't know why. I don't think it's because I'm doing too much mousing. And it doesn't affect my left arm at all. So, if it was my left arm and not my right, I'd be worried about having a heart attack. But I don't know what that is. Weakness in your arm's not good, is it? My father died from a stroke. So, but this, this is a stroke, it's been going on for two months. So that's about it really, I'm not going to keep you because I don't want to bore you, you know, I don't want you to sit there thinking, oh God, he's, that, you know, he's really got to the point where, where he's just blathering on about absolutely nothing. I've got, uh, my, my day is absolutely crammed. This morning is absolutely crammed. Even the uh, time we normally set aside, the half an hour at 10 o'clock or 10.30 for emergencies, is absolutely crammed. We've got another person who, uh, is ringing us up this morning because they want to come in we'll probably have to stick on the end of the morning because we won't have a cancellation because everybody pays in advance which is the most brilliant system that we love and we'd recommend to everybody and we don't know why everybody isn't doing it and it works really well and the patients don't mind uh, and uh, funnily enough I mean all the patients who you get them up and it says on their notes you know uh, make this patient pay when they make an appointment because in the past they've made appointments and then found reasons not to come in or, or just forgot or whatever um, we can delete all those notes now because that's just the way we treat everybody you know and people who we don't really want to make appointments because we, we, know, we know that they're unreliable or uh, you know turn up late or whatever um, well the turning up late really is still a bit of a problem but
then uh, we just uh, we don't you know we 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 make anybody appointments now. Doesn't matter how unreliable it doesn't matter how unreliable they are. They always everyone can always ring up make an appointment. We don't care if you failed the last ten appointments. Ring up make an appointment. We send you an invoice. It's payable by five o'clock. Two working or one working day clear of the appointment day. And uh, if you don't pay the invoice, we just cancel the appointment. So, and you know, it's working quietly in the background because uh, what happens is people who don't have the money, who in the past might have cancelled at short notice or simply not turned up, what they do is they ring us up and they say, look, I've got an appointment. Like I had someone ring up yesterday, which was uh, Wednesday or whatever, Thursday, don't know. <laughs> <coughs> don't know what day of the week it is it's Friday so yesterday would have been Thursday under normal circumstances and uh, you know they rang up and they said look I've got an appointment next Thursday but um, you know uh, I've been called into work I need to cancel it can you put it back two or three weeks now what that usually means is they, they don't have the money uh, and they keep getting these reminders saying that they've got to pay this invoice and so they think, oh, I'll, I'll, uh, what I'll do is I'll reschedule the appointment when I've got the money, which is fine. So what they do is they reschedule the appointment and then obviously the, we change the date on the invoice to make it to be paid two days before their next their new appointment. And um, and then all of a sudden the money pressure's off them, isn't it? It's like uh, they're, uh, they're, we're happy because they've rescheduled. They're happy because they've had the financial pressure taken off them, and they don't. And there's no potential for them just to not turn up on the day because um, they might, you know. I mean, people are funny, aren't they? They're just like they might think, oh well, perhaps something will turn up. Perhaps I'll have the money on the day. Perhaps I'll have a chat with my friend or dad or something, and he might be able to lend it to me. And then it turns out that they can't. And Everybody's turning left. Right, we have to do that sometime. We have to pull out and stop in the middle of the road. If there's a lorry trying to get out of that road because the road bends round to the uh, right behind, behind. So they can't see round the corner. But you, when you're coming out from the other side, you can see round the corner. So if you can see a load of cars bombing up, then the best thing to do is pull out in front of them, stop them all, and then let the lorry out and then and then carry on. That they will stop because they can see you, but if the lorry pulled out, they wouldn't be able to see the lorry. So, uh, you know, in a way you're sort of preventing an accident by nearly causing one. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, so this pay, pay in advance thing is working really well. But you do need to have some, what you need to have, what you need to have ideally is a dental payment system that is capable of issuing a, a invoices and taking payments online. And I think, you know, for that, you know, you're never going to get like software, oh, somebody's ringing, don't worry, somebody will pick that up at work. Um, the, the software of excellence or systems for dentists and that, they're never going to get a banking license. And so, so basically, forget that. Um, and what I don't know whether they're um, it depends on whether a banking back end like Square ever is ever going to issue an um, API an application programming interface with, with a secure key that allows people to uh, upload details you know name address uh, email phone number and uh, invoice amount details and uh, due date automatically and that's a uh, I mean that's a massive commitment for them because uh, you know someone people are not very hygienic with their private keys and if they a private key was allowed to leak then what could happen is anyone who had that private key could just invoice invoice a ton of people uh, through their squares back end uh, you know hack into it and just issue a ton of invoices and uh, and cause no end of chaos you know probably not get away with much but 
because they need to have it paid into a bank account that was pre-authorised. But I mean, they could certainly, in the same way as uh, credit card firms are very, um, they're very happy to make it quite clear that you are not to keep anybody's credit card details. You know, we don't we don't keep anybody's. And in fact, somebody came in yesterday and on that particular point and said, um, you know, I paid an invoice. Uh, and I said, well, look, you know, you need a fill-in. Don't worry, we'll book you in. We'll send you the invoice for the fill-in in due course, blah, blah, blah. And they said, well, they, you know, you don't need to because I tick this box to save my credit card details. So you've got my credit card details. And so, you know, if you like, then you can just just debit my credit card, you know. I don't, you don't, I don't need to be involved. And I had to explain to them that they very much do need to be involved because we don't have their credit card details. And that box that they ticked allowed uh, Square to store their credit card details so that the next time we send them an invoice, it's easier for them to pay it because Square will say, do you wish to use the credit card details that we have stored uh, for you, you know, on file? But they, that's nothing to do with us. And we don't, we don't, get, we don't ever get the credit card details. We got the very best. We get like the four last four digits, just to so that we can confirm, particularly if we're making a refund, that it's being refunded on the right card, um, or, or just to confirm which card was used. You know, if the patient asks. <coughs> so, but uh, it's a, it's odd, isn't it, that you have to explain to patients uh, how that works. And then one last little um, wrinkle that we've had to do is that um, we have a thing where if patients pay cash, and, and nobody does, but if they want to pay cash, we've said that, you know, don't worry, because a lot of them said, oh, I'm too old, I can't be paying online invoices, blah, blah, blah. I'm not, you know, I'm not very internet savvy, etc. cetera. And, um, and so we do say, well, you can pay cash. Uh, and then we used to say, you know, you can pay on the day in cash save them having to make two visits but then so many people just didn't turn up and we were back in the old situation of not having any recourse any fallback to to make up you know pay for the time wasted as a result um, and so what we've done is we've had to stop saying to people you know you can get out of paying your invoice but just telling us that you're going to pay cash on the day uh, and, and, and if you're going to pay cash then we expect it to arrive uh, within the same deadline, which is by 5 p.m., with a clear working day between uh, the payment and the and the appointment. So, for example, an appointment at uh, I don't know 3 p.m. Thursday has to be settled by 5 p.m. Tuesday. Gives that gives us time to cancel it and uh, and rebook it. And believe me, if this morning's anything to go by, we can rebook it quite easily. So I used to have qualms about you know press should we just let the patient should we see if they're going to turn up they haven't paid the invoice but should we just keep the appointment just just in case they turn up and um but we're we're over that now and it's just a, you like my haircut it's not bad is it anyway it's a bit short i think but you always think that when you've had it done don't you anyway lovely to talk to you and uh, i'll talk to you soon bye